So a couple of days ago, my never-ending carousel of primary phones landed back on the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, where I have quite happily reinstalled the QPR1 beta for Android 16. Man, does it look great! And since that was installed on there, I decided, let me take a closer look at this desktop mode. Let me spend some real time with it and see if I think this is something that I'm going to get much use out of. And I thought about how I would go about this. You know, I could set up a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard, but I've already got this desktop set up here that I'm filming on. Where would I put such a thing? I filmed some B-roll back there, and I thought that's not really a good place to put it either because it's going to have to move almost immediately. So I thought two options. One, I could use one of my handful of lap docks, which I've covered on this channel a few times, or two... I can do something really, really weird that is a simpler solution, and I want to talk about that in this video. So what I have here is a 15.6-inch portable monitor from a company called Ymaxit. You're noticing that my wallpaper isn't there. That's actually a bug that I think I've just discovered. I'll talk about that here when we kind of go a little bit closer. But what's cool about this monitor is it's a touchscreen monitor. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm plugging my Pixel 9 Pro Fold into this monitor, and now it's actually capable of fully powering it as well. When I tested this on my Pixel 9 Pro XL, I had to have an external power supply plugged in. I don't know if this changed with one of the more recent beta updates, but that's no longer the case. It is actually able to power it all by itself, one single cable. And what I basically have is a really big, kind of weird pixel tablet. Let me see if I can quickly confirm what's going on with this wallpaper being blanked out. I set my wallpaper, my lock screen to be this. Let me see what happens if I go into the effects and I set it back to weather. It looks like no change. We'll unplug and plug back in. So I just changed the wallpaper here and then changed it back and that seemed to fix it. Not really sure what to make of that, but there you go. So I've kind of just been hanging out on my couch with this giant tablet set up. It is definitely a little bit strange, but it's weirdly more comfortable than you would think. My phone is just plugged into it and it's sitting on a little table next to my couch and this is running just fine. At one point I did actually plug a power cable into the other USB-C port on this monitor and that did allow my phone to charge at the same time, but you don't have to do that. You just have a gigantic 15.6 inch 16 by 9 aspect ratio tablet. And that actually kind of brings me to the first thing that I really noticed pretty heavily was the 16 by 9 aspect ratio just not really conducive to good use of Android applications. Let's just fire up Threads, for instance. Obviously, it's going to load up first and foremost in this sort of floating window, and you can move it around and everything, but if you maximize this... It's just really, really wide. You know, it's just not, it's not making good use of such a wide screen. Now, Google is trying with Android 16 to sort of push developers into having apps that reflow better, but don't hold your breath for something like that happening quickly. So some applications I think do work perfectly fine. Uh, YouTube is a good example. And if we fire up a video, we have one panel over here and uh, the video itself in the middle. And of course, you can swipe up and full screen the video and that's going to work just fine. But again, a lot of applications just don't make good use of such a wide screen. That being said, if you do two things at once, you can start to really make some pretty good use of this. There's threads and we'll drag Discord over as well. And they're going to sort of snap into place. And now you have two two different applications that I think look pretty solid and are going to work, I think, really quite well. No real problems here at all. So one Android app stretched across a widescreen, bad. Two Android apps side by side in this split window scenario, much, much better. Obviously, one thing that really started to annoy me was the fact that I don't seem to know a way to get to my notifications on this monitor. I can see a notification but there's nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything with quick settings. There's just nothing there for me to do. So that's definitely very, very frustrating. Another thing is that if you lock your phone, what's going to happen is it's going to put this screen into this sort of lock screen appearance, which is a little bit strange. So you do have to keep the phone awake all the time. That's something that they definitely need to address. 
I also did run into an issue with Google Maps where multi-touch does not work. Well, okay, it worked a little bit there. That was weird. Yeah, multi-touch is bugged in Google Maps, and I would imagine there are probably other applications where it's going to be a little bit bugged as well. But again, just in general, and keep in mind, I'm doing this from behind. You can see my reflection there. From behind a, a phone, I'm having to reach around. This actually does work surprisingly well. Being able to resize the size and shape of applications is quite responsive. Let's fire up a link there inside Feedly and it's going to instantly grab my browser and open that up as well. It really is surprising how decent this is. You even have access to this on-screen keyboard if you need to do some typing. You can do that right here as well. It's extremely wide, which makes it a little bit awkward, but you can definitely get some typing done on it. Formatting on my website looks a little bit broken in this view. There's a black bar over there that I can't quite explain. <laughs> Let's see, can you change the layout? You can resize, split keyboard. Yeah, there you go. So now you're holding this gigantic tablet and off you go typing. That would kind of work. And I guess that formatting issue was a Firefox problem because Chrome is absolutely nailing it. My website looking absolutely fantastic in Chrome. Little uh, uh, shameless plug for ShaneCraig.tech. Look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it would be my preferred way to get work done using my phone. But I will tell you that it is really quite surprising how well it already works with those caveats I gave, right? So being able to lock your phone, being able to access your notifications, those are really, really big deals. But in general, even just with an external monitor and one cable, sitting down and having a much larger screen to split window in and do things like that being powered by my phone, I was very pleasantly surprised how quickly I just stopped thinking about how weird this was and just used it and kind of enjoyed myself. Given this more extensive experience now, if I assume that we're going to get these really obvious fixes that we need, I think that this could genuinely be a transformative way to use these phones. There is so much potential here. Now guys, if you want a more surface level view of this and what you need to actually get it working, how to do this, what hardware might work well for you. I'll put a link in the description to that video because I think that some of you might not even understand like, okay, how do I do this on my phone? I can plug my phone in and this doesn't happen. That'll be all explained in that video down below. But by and large, guys, that's kind of what I think about where this desktop mode is now, and I am more impressed with it than I ever have been since I finally took the time to really use it and, and spend some quality time with it over the last few days. But I'd love to know what you guys think in those comments, how many of you have done the same, and are you having the same experience? Or maybe you're having the opposite experience, and you're like, oh, I don't actually like this at all now that I have it in hand. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.